Hola a todas y a todos. Eh, soy David. Me llamo David. Eh, hola desde Bogotá, Colombia. Eh, I'm very happy to be here again. It's Tuesday, and here I'm with my friend David from the U.S. Hola, David. ¿Cómo estás? Hola, David. Gracias por la introducción. Um, estoy feliz de uh, estar aquí con ustedes. I'm happy to be here with you all um, otra vez. Again, uh, me encanta hacer este, uh, estos videos. I love doing these videos. Um, it has been so much fun. Um, so we are just um, so excited to have you back. We love to see familiar faces. Um, I was reading the comments and I saw Phyllis wrote a very funny joke about um, David's. My friend David had his ID stolen. Now he's just Dave. I was cracking up at that. So um, thank you so much for engaging with us week after week. Um, we think it's just so, so amazing um, to see your faces back again. Uh, so David, I have a question for you. Um, ¿Qué estás haciendo en estos últimos días? David, eh, es una buena pregunta. Creo que puedo responderla fácilmente. En estos días estoy trabajando mucho, todos los días, de lunes mm -hmm. a viernes, y también estoy estudiando. Estoy estudiando un nuevo idioma. Estoy aprendiendo italiano. Wow. ¿Qué tal? Qué bueno. Yeah. It sounds like you're, sí. you're very busy um, doing so many things. Mm -hmm. If you notice, I asked David, um, ¿qué estás haciendo? And that means, what are you doing? It could also mean, what are you making? But in this context, um, it's pretty clear. But I was asking him, what is he doing? And then he responded, he said he's uh, trabajando, he's working a lot, he's aprendiendo italiano, learning Italian. So um, that's just mm -hmm. a little teaser for the topic of today's episode, which is uh, verbs with the ending ando or yendo, which uh, translates to the equivalent ing in English. So doing something, making something, in David's case, working and learning. So we hope you're excited for today's lesson. It's one of my favorites. And uh, pretty straightforward, so we'll try not to take up too much of your time. But first, let's get back to last week's episode, um, where we talked about negation in Spanish, and we left you all with a uh, homework sentence. And let's display that on the screen right now. Yo nunca camino por esa calle. And we ask you to turn it into a um, double negative sentence in Spanish with the word no. So let's see what your answers are. Yeah, so just for you as a, as a recap, um, we saw the negation, uh, we saw different words like no, which means no, uh, we saw never, which means, uh, which is nunca in Spanish, and nothing, which is nadie, eh, nada, and no one, which is nadie. And we saw also a bonus word, which is tampoco, which is the negation word for uh, también. Uh, so in, in English, uh, this would mean uh, neither. So, uh, and we saw that with those words, we can also um, build sentences with double negation. So sometimes we need only one negation word, like nunca camino por esa calle. But sometimes we can also use, uh, need a double negation inside a sentence. So the, the idea is to, um, yeah, make out of this sentence something with double negation. Um, and I think we can see some um, answers here. Um, David is um, are already um, answering here. It's great to see um, that maybe we should um, display here this answer. No camino nunca por esa calle. Mm. And this is right. So in this case, we will use, um, and here, David, we will use um, double negation because we have the main negation word, which is nunca in this sentence, after the verb. So if we have the verb caminar, to walk, and I use it with yo, yo camino, then if I, if I want to say I never walk uh, on the street, then I would say no camino nunca por esa calle. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, as we mentioned before, one week ago, uh, nunca camino por esa calle is also uh, correct. So here we have two options. 
no camino eh, nunca por esa calle, más David, Liz, uh, um, Gail, um, Jerry, many people uh, have already um, posted something. Uh, they are all right, and that's it's great to see that. So I think um, if there are, uh, we can skip to the topic that we prepared, that we brought up uh, for you today, which is uh, the verb estar plus uh, the verb ending in ando yendo. So David, uh, what do we have for today? First, let's just do a little um, introduction and we should probably start out by reviewing the conjugations of the verb estar. So this is something that we talked about in our episode about estar versus ser. And we actually, in that episode, lightly talked about one of the use cases of the verb estar, which is what we call the present progressive form. And that's kind of just a fancy way of saying that you are expressing that someone, the subject of a verb, is doing something. So when we say present progressive, it means it's happening in the present. And it's also the progressive. So it's an action that is progressing along. It's continuing. It doesn't have a definite start and end point. So in English, that would be something like, um, I'm doing, I'm making, I'm speaking, um, or you are finding, you are answering. All of any verb that exists in English, and we'll find out in Spanish, can be turned into the progressive form. So we're gonna use the verb a star with it. And here we can see on the screen the forms of a star that we learned before. Um, so let's review them just really briefly. Yo estoy, I am, tú estás, you are. In the uh, informal singular case, el e a usted está, nosotros o nosotras estamos, we are, vosotros estáis, you all um, in in uh, Spain, not in Latin America, they don't use vosotros in Latin America, are, or ellos, ellos, ellos ellas, I should say ellas, ustedes están, so that is you all um, in Latin America, or they are. So this should be just a brief refresher. And uh, we'll see that when we, rem when we remember that a star is used um, more for temporary conditions or states, it actually makes a lot of sense that we'd use it um, with what we're gonna call the gerund, el gerundio, the form of the verb that has this special ending, ando or yendo. So now that we've reviewed a star, we can start talking about um, some of these verbs and how to form them um, if you have the infinitive the like what we would call the infinitive form um, to do something. So, David, I'll send it over to you to explain how to form um, with a certain group of verbs. So uh, it's basically very easy to build these verbs uh, that correspond to the ing form in English. So in Spanish, as you um, already heard, uh, we have two different endings, ando yendo, and it's actually very simple to know which ending I need. But let's start with the verbs that end in R in the infinitive form. So uh, there are uh, three different groups in Spanish, um, groups of verbs, and they are um, sorted according to the ending. So let's start with this verb, uh, to work. How do we say to work in Spanish? Trabajar. So as we see here, we uh, added a dash um, just to uh, separate the ending. Um, but if we remove it, it's uh, to work. It means to work. Uh, so let's have a look at trabajar. So we have the, the stem, trabaj. Uh, so we remove the ending R, we drop it. And then we add the ending ando. And then we end up with a question, for example, donde están trabajando? Where are they working? Um, this can also mean where are you working if we are also addressing a group of people, ustedes, in Latin American Spanish. So um, it's very it's very easy as we can see, but let's have a look at another verb, which is also very very um, useful in Spanish. Uh, the verb is estudiar. So estudiar also ends in ar um, to study, and here we have uh, the same case. We are studying. Estamos estudiando para el examen de mañana. You know, we are studying for the for tomorrow's exam. Estamos estudiando para el examen de mañana. So um, we just saw two verbs, trabajar, estudiar, 
And I saw here also an example given by Warren, uh, which is uh, something that I'm going to use. Están hablando en inglés y en español. Um, so here we have also a verb, which is hablar, and ends in R in, in Spanish, AR. And uh, again, if we want to say they are speaking in English and in Spanish, this is how we could say están hablando en inglés y en español. Uh, so that's that's a very good example. Uh, we also have a different uh, example sentence that we can also post here on the screen. Um, ¿Con quién estás hablando? Yeah, who are you talking to? ¿Con quién estás hablando? So um, this is very simple. If the verb, uh, if the infinitive verb ends in ar, we just drop that ending and we add ando. And that would be our ing form in Spanish. But um, David, what about those verbs uh, that end in er or ir? So luckily, there's not too much of a difference so, uh, here. And we'll find out that um, mm -hmm. verbs that end in er and ir actually behave the same way. So you don't have to memorize three different endings. It's actually just two. So let's post an example on the screen of another verb that ends in er. And this is one um, you'll definitely recognize, comer, to eat. So much like with verbs that end in ar, you take off the ending, slice it off, you get the, the stem, gom, and then you add endo. So that's i-e-n-d-o. And this is the same, like I said, for verbs that end in er and ir. So this is um, a little bit of an advanced construction in this sentence, but I'll, I'll explain what it means. It says, hemos estado comiendo por horas. So here you see the the uh, gerundio, the form uh, in the progressive, comiendo, which means eating. And then you might wonder what hemos estado means. You might recognize a star um, in, the, in the word estado, and you'd be right to recognize that. So that actually um, is what we'd call a the past perfect form of, um, or I'm sorry, the participle form of the verb a star, and then the present perfect um, verb tense is formed by adding what um, this, this verb amos. Um, so that means we have, then you get the um, estar in the word estado, which means then, so you get we have been, hemos estado eating, comiendo por horas, for hours. So um, we're focusing today on, on um, the form of the, of the verb comiendo and not so much on this new verb tense that might be unfamiliar, but it's important to know that you can use different verb tenses beyond just the present tense of a star. Um, so that was one we wanted to, to expose you to. It means we have been eating for hours, hemos estado comiendo. So mm -hmm. let's go ahead and um, review a different sentence. Um, and this one's a little bit simpler in terms of the verb tense. We have the verb aprender. And you'll notice, if you remember at the beginning of this episode, David said, um, yo estoy aprendiendo el, espan or el italiano. Um, and that means learning. So if I ask a group of people um, in Spain, estáis aprendiendo japonés? Are you all learning Japanese? Um, you can see that you take the verb aprender, you cut off the, the ER at the end, you have the stem left, and you add yendo to the end. Okay, so now let's get a verb that has um, an IR ending just to prove to you that it's the same situation. So here we say vivir, to live, and we chop off the IR ending. Um, so then you have the stem vib, you add yendo, and you can say, yo estaba viviendo en España cuando yo leí mi primer libro en español. So you'll also notice that um, you see the verb estar come up in the word estaba, and that's another um, verb tense we haven't talked much about, but it's one of the two past tenses in Spanish, um, one of the two simple past tenses called the imperfect tense. And it kind of captures the idea of something that happened without a clear starting and ending point in the past, um, as opposed to the preterite tense, which has a very defined start and end point. So this is something we will definitely talk about in a later episode, but just wanted to, um, to show you that you can use uh, the progressive form, the gerund, el gerundio form, uh, viviendo with a star in multiple tenses. So this translates to, I was living in Spain, when I read my first book in Spanish. So, um, like I said, we'll talk more about this in a later episode, but you see the verb vivir is 
uh, transform to viviendo, uh, which means living, and then use it with the verb estar. Yeah, that's great, David. So uh, I think it's very interesting to see that if we have a closer look at the at the English translation of this sentence, you kind of say the same as well in English. I was living in Spain when I read my first book in Spanish. Uh, so I think this is a good example of showing how uh, Spanish and English might also be similar sometimes. And this is a very useful example. So now that we've been talking about verbs that end in um, ER and IR, like vivir, comer, aprender, let's have a look at some of those verbs um, that have um, an irregular form in, uh, in gerundio in Spanish. Um, good news, it's uh, only a few of them, and it's um, worth learning them uh, by heart. Um, they are very useful. Uh, let's start with the verb to read. Um, how do we say to read in Spanish? It's leer. Um, since uh, we have le um, as a stem uh, of this verb, and we want to add the ending yendo, uh, that I in the in the beginning um, becomes a Y in Spanish. And then we end up saying leyendo, leyendo. Just remember that double L and Y are pronounced um, kind of the same as uh, J in Jenny, leyendo. Uh, there might be some regional differences, uh, but everyone understands leyendo, leyendo, uh, etc. So um, if I want to say I'm reading an interesting book, uh, I would say in Spanish, estoy leyendo un libro interesante. Uh, the same applies also uh, with the verb construir, to construct uh, or to build. Uh, so if I would say uh, they are building a house, I would say están construyendo una casa. So it's kind of the same ending. Um, yendo becomes yendo uh, with those verbs, leer, construir, and the same with the verb ir, to go, uh, which is simply yendo. Uh, um, estoy yendo a la biblioteca. I'm going to the library. Uh, so it's very useful. Those three verbs uh, have the same form. Um, so yendo um, becomes yendo. Uh, but let's have a look at a uh, different uh, construction that we um, might come across sometimes uh, with verbs that are very useful. Um, let's start with the verb to come. How do we say to come? Venir. So it's a verb that ends in IR, and the um, ING form, the uh, German form in Spanish, is viniendo. Um, so very, very easy. I'm coming home. Estoy viniendo a casa. And the same applies also uh, to the verb sentir. Uh, that's a verb that we saw some weeks ago because we can also use it as a reflexive verb, um, sentirse como te sientes. Um, I can also ask David, uh, maybe he was sick, uh, David, ¿cómo te estás sintiendo? Um, and then David Hola. could also say, what, do, what, what would you say, David? ¿Cómo te estás yo, sintiendo? Yo me estoy sintiendo mejor, gracias por preguntarme. Mm -hmm. um, I'm feeling better. Thanks for asking. Yeah, uh, I'm happy. Soy feliz. Um, so we have uh, the the stem send, um, and it becomes sind, sintiendo. And the same also applies uh, for the verb decir, which is to say, to tell. Um, so in uh, the ing form would be diciendo. Um, so as a recommendation for uh, our Spanish learners, for our viewers. Um, I would say, since we are grouping these verbs, uh, it would be um, very useful to learn them as a group, like leer, leyendo, construir, construyendo, ir, yendo. And here, in this case, we have venir, viniendo, sentir, sintiendo, decir, diciendo. There is also a key here, because all of those verbs in the second group have a ni um, in, the, in the stem. So ven, venir, sen, sentir, des, decir. So it's it's very um, um, it's very useful to have these um, kind of helps, and then we have a last group which is um, less common. Actually, this is um, 
the easiest one because here we only have these three verbs. Um, so we have um, dormir, to sleep. Um, and if we want to say uh, I'm sleeping in Spanish, I would say estoy durmiendo. Uh, the same also applies to verbs like poder, to be able to, or, and morir, to die. Uh, so those verbs have a little change in the stem. So as we saw in the past group, um, the the vowel, uh, the stem, uh, the vowel in the stem, um, like in this case, dormir, uh, the O becomes like a U, uh, dormir, durmiendo, and the same also uh, is uh, applied to verbs like poder, pudiendo, and morir, muriendo. So it's very useful. This last group has only these three verbs. Um, in the other verb, in the other verb groups that we presented before, um, venir, um, sentir, sen, eh, and decir, and hear, leer, construir, and ir, um, there might be other verbs um, that um, have the same um, construction, uh, but they are less common. So um, I would like you to, to learn these verbs. Uh, it's nine in total, uh, plus the uh, regular forms that we saw in the beginning and then you have them. Um, so these um, ando yendo forms in Spanish are very, very useful. And we are going to show you uh, some other examples of these verbs being used not only with the verb estar, as we saw in the beginning, but also with those, uh, with other verbs. So David, um, what other verbs can we uh, use these forms with? So like David said, we often see the progressive form, the gerund form with the verb star, but there is a handful of other verbs you can use. And you'll see it kind of makes sense um, once we show you an example. The first one is seguir, um, which usually means to follow, but it can also in a lot of contexts mean to continue, to keep on doing something. So when we have a sentence like ustedes siguen viviendo en Berlin, that would translate to do you all keep living in Berlin or are you all continuing to live in Berlin? So it's kind of like if you have this idea of a continuation of something or someone is continuing to do something, they're keeping on, then you can use the verb seguir as well. And that's totally acceptable. Um, and if you don't want to use a star in a context like that. So then David, what is the next example of a verb you can use instead of a star? So we can use the verb andar, um, which literally means like to walk, like something is going on. Uh, and then we can also ask this question, que andas haciendo, which is equivalent to the question, que estás haciendo. It's very colloquial, uh, but in this case, we can just perfectly replace the verb andar with the verb estar. It's basically the same. Um, and then we have a last example uh, with another verb that we also use very often in Spanish, uh, plus uh, the uh, ando yendo form, uh, which is the verb llevar. So um, in this last case that we want to uh, present to you today, um, we have a time um, aspect inside the sentence. So let me show it to you here on the screen. Um, so if we use uh, llevar plus um, gerund in Spanish, like in this example, llevo estudiando francés tres años. <clears throat> um, so that, that um, time, tres años, that's a period of time. Uh, that's very important when we use the verb llevar plus gerund because um, it reflects um, uh, on the time that we are uh, spending on doing something. Like in this case, I, I've been learning French for three years. That would be the, the translation in, 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 in English. So uh, we use uh, llevar uh, plus um, the verb um, with the ending ando yendo, uh, just to express this continuity, this uh, action that has uh, started in the past and it's uh, being running for a while. So in this case, tres años. Uh, llevo estudiando alemán por 12 años, for example. So it's very useful when we want to say, uh, when we want to express an action that uh, started taking place in the in the past and it's uh, actually, uh, it's currently going on. Yeah, so, one, way, 
Yeah. Oh, David. sorry. I was going to say right. one way that I remember to use um, the verb llevar is that it translates to carry. And so I like to, in English, we have an expression, carry on doing something. And so I think that it's easy just for me to, to make that jump from English to Spanish. Oh, like I carry on studying French for three years. Um, so that's, I feel like that's kind of where it makes the most sense to me to think about because you have a, like a verb like llevar is often it can also it, it can mean to wear as well like to wear some clothing um so i'm like oh where like why would this why does this verb specifically replace a star in cases like this but then i think of oh carry carry on maybe not the best example but uh, it helps me remember mm -hmm. yeah yeah exactly so those are the the verbs that we can also use with uh, ando yendo forms uh, so just for you to see that uh, we have also very similar uh, constructions um, in Spanish as you use them also in English. Um, it's very useful uh, to have these, these forms to use them also in, in real life. Uh, it's worth also knowing that uh, we use these, um, these forms uh, with, the, with the endings and oyendo um, less often than in English. And um, if uh, David gives me a second, I'm gonna uh, display here, show a question uh, by Warren, um, uh, which refers to what I want to say, voy or estoy yendo? Um, ¿Cuál es la diferencia? What's the difference? Um, it's basically what Dana immediately says. Um, it's uh, the same difference between I go and I'm going in English. Uh, but in English, you would uh, say, I'm going to the cinema um, right now, um, which is something that we can also say in Spanish, estoy yendo al cine. Uh, but in Spanish, we would say, eh, voy al cine, um, ahora. So we use um, in time, like words that indicate time to have the verb express this continuity. So it doesn't necessarily uh, need to be something with ando yendo. Uh, but it's uh, basically it's basically it, as uh, Dana says. I go today. I go often. Versus I'm going now. Uh, this is the the um, this is how we use these uh, forms in Spanish. So uh, don't um, wonder if you see a sentence that is using the ing form in English, but it's not using it in in the Spanish form. Uh, so um, this is also very useful for me because when I'm speaking in English. I tend to use it uh, a bit more often um, uh, than I, I do in Spanish. Uh, but that's that's basically uh, the difference. The difference between doing something uh, on a regular basis, hago eh, los deberes, I do uh, my homework, uh, versus I'm doing my homework right now, estoy haciendo los deberes. Um, and, and that's it. OK, David, let's give um, our amazing viewers the first example sentence that we want to test them on and feel free to keep asking questions if something comes to you and we can get back to them after this little exercise but i think just to sum up what we've talked about it's a great time to display a sentence like this so we start out with nosotros lavamos los platos which means we wash the plates or the dishes how would we say we are washing the plates or we're washing the dishes something that I don't like to do here at home. That's actually one of my favorite chores, strangely enough. I think it's very therapeutic to have mm -hmm. the warm water running mm -hmm. over your hands. That's I true. Like uh, that doesn't work for me. Yo prefiero cocinar. I prefer cooking. <laughs> mm. So we see uh, a lot of examples. Um, yeah, everyone's doing really well. Good job. So let's go ahead and display. So it looks like um, Jerry has the right answer. Many people have the right answer too. Um, so congratulations to everyone who got it right. Estamos lavando. Uh, are, so 
a star conjugated in the form, uh, the first person plural form, mm -hmm. nosotros, nosotras, um, which means are, are washing, lavando, estamos lavando, mm -hmm. uh, great work. And uh, remember that estamos does not have an accent mark on it. I think most everyone got that right, but that's the only form of a star that does not have an accent mark. Just a side note, um, mm -hmm. as you conjugate the verb. Okay, so good job to everyone. Let's give another sentence. Here it is. El libro que te presté. ¿Lo estás? Mm -hmm. It's a question. The book that I lent you. So here we have the verb in brackets, leer. And remember that that's an irregular verb. So it has a small change. And remember from an earlier episode, the direct object pronoun lo. So in that in this case, lo mm -hmm. stands for el libro, the book. And there's a there's actually another little lesson we could teach here about the the placement of that very specific word lo, the object pronoun, relative to um, a verb phrase like the one that you see on the mm -hmm. screen, um, the present progressive. So maybe we could say, mention a little bit about that also, David. That's true, that's true. But um, let's have a look at the at our answers, at the responses to this. So maybe we can say, yeah. Lisa says, leyendo. Lo estás leyendo. Uh, that's correct. That's uh, perfect. So uh, many of you got it right. Um, congratulations. It's great to see uh, that you um, are using leer with the right form, uh, leyendo. So uh, basically, this question mean, uh, means, are you reading it? Um, Lo estás leyendo? Are you reading it right now, that book that I lent to you? Um, and as David was pointing out, there is something very useful here in Spanish that is not possible to do in, in English, which is uh, the position of that um, object pronoun, lo. Because in Spanish, we could also say, estás leyendo lo. So we would attach that uh, pronoun uh, to the verb form uh, with ando yendo. Estás leyendo lo. Uh, so it's very interesting. Uh, it's um, uh, both are right. Lo estás leyendo, estás leyéndolo. And we will learn more on this topic in one of our next episodes. I think the next one or in two weeks. Um, so um, we will learn when to uh, when to place those pronouns after the verbs or before the verbs when it's uh, it's possible to to uh, have both positions or not. Uh, but we wanted just to um, to give you here this uh, sneak peek. Um, so uh, we hope to see you um, next week or in two weeks. Um, that's the time where uh, we are going to explain this topic. And as always, we have also a last sentence that we would like you to uh, try to solve uh, during this week. Uh, we will review it. Uh, next Tuesday, and the sentence reads, it's actually a question, ¿Cuánto tiempo llevas en español? And maybe you can also answer that question. Yeah, uh, yeah. That would be very interesting uh, for us to know. Yeah. And, and I think, yeah, I'm looking forward to, uh, to your answers. So if you have any more questions for us right now or ones that you want us to answer later on after this episode, please feel free to keep asking them. Love your questions. You are all so smart and engaged. And so we really love to hear from you. Um, but if not, uh, we'll, we'll give it a bit of time to see if you have any more questions. But I will go ahead and say, um, as I usually do when we wrap these things up, Feel free to find us on social media at Babel USA on Twitter and Instagram or here on Facebook where you already are. 
Uh, we love to engage with you. It's always so special to hear from you. Uh, you can also find us at our Quora space. So it's a perfect forum or a little sub topic area for engaging with other language learners about all types of language learning questions. Um, lots of really cool people on there. And then you can find us too on Babbel Magazine, which is uh, such a great resource hub for articles about all types of language learning. Um, so find us at one of these resources if you want to ask questions in the comments on this post and we'll try to get back to them. But thank you so much for tuning in this week. And uh, David, if you have anything to add, please feel free. Or maybe give it a little bit more time to see if people have questions too. Yeah, you still uh, you can still post your questions. Uh, we would like to see them. Um, you also have more time um, in the next days because we will have a look at, at them as well. Um, feel free to ask uh, whatever you need, whatever uh, you don't understand. Um, and yeah, I'm always enjoying these sessions. I'm also very happy to see your um, engagement. Um, um, your active participation, it's great. Uh, that's motivating. And yeah, I'm looking forward to um, yeah, next Tuesday. Uh, we see some um, some questions. Um, regarding the pronunciation, it's uh, a short one. So maybe I can say some words about it. So Wendy is asking, how common is saying the J sound for uh, double R or Y versus the Y sound? My daughter lives in Madrid and she says uh, yo, not yo. Um, yeah, Wendy, this is a regional difference. So um, in, Sp in Spain, the pronunciation of, um, of this sound of uh, double L and Y is uh, very similar to just a sense, like uh, an I. So it sounds like yo, yo. Uh, whereas we uh, see these being pronounced in uh, different ways um, in Latin America. So uh, I come from Colombia and we pronounce this like a Joe, uh, like J. So um, basically we can have different values uh, for the sound. Uh, don't worry about that. Uh, you can just pick the one that's easy for you. Uh, and it's just important for you to know that um, the different values have, um, um, they, they are correct. So if you say yendo or yendo, uh, that's a regional difference. And no one pays attention to that, actually, um, because the context and, and everything what we say in Spanish and everything what we listen to is uh, should be clear to us despite that very little sound. But uh, yeah, you can just decide uh, whether you want to um, say J instead of, of E. Uh, or vice versa. Yeah. Thanks, David, for answering that. You're better at the pronunciation questions than I am. Um, you're better at answering many questions than I am because you are so smart and you're also a native speaker. Um, and I think that's my advantage. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't recognize any difference in, in the, uh, like how you speak English. Like uh, these little nuances, um, it's something that I cannot catch. Um, but I'm happy to answer uh, also these these questions regarding pronunciation, and yeah, you can just keep asking. So then, before we sign off, we have one more question: Is this every Tuesday? Yes, for the most part. And then Phyllis came through with a great answer. Uh, most of the time, yes. Uh, but we'll let you know if we're skipping um, uh, a week or if we need to move days. But usually. You can find us Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern time on this page, our Facebook page. And um, you should know if, uh, unless something changes, you should know uh, that's where you can find us. But we'll try to let you know if that isn't the case. Um, and then Dana asked, these sessions will continue into July as well. That is the plan for now. Um, like we said, we'll let you know if that changes. But we're so glad to see that there's um, a demand for it and a high engagement. So. Keep inviting your friends, uh, let them know if this has been helpful for you and keep telling us what you wanna hear from us. There are so many topics in Spanish that we could cover. Um, so we'll just keep going for uh, the immediate future as long as there's um, the desire from you wonderful people for that. Mm -hmm. So um, with that, we will say adios 
Um, gracias por estar aquí con nosotros. Thanks for being here with us. I um, hope you have a great week and we'll see you next week. Yeah. Nos vemos el martes. Hasta pronto. Bye, everyone. Hasta pronto.